Hello, everybody. Welcome to our assistive technologies webinar. Oh, there's Victoria. Hello, Victoria. How are you doing? Just got to get her sound on. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're just going to wait for a few more uh, attendees to stream in. I know we were, we are expecting quite a, a nice crowd this evening. And uh, we can just start by, I will formally introduce myself. My name is Ruth Rumack. I am the director, the executive director of education and the founder of Ruth Rumack's Learning Space. And I would love to know a little bit more about who is joining us today too. And uh, while you're typing that in, if you wish to just let me know what are the um, ages of your kids and what school board you're in. Is it Toronto District School Board? Is it a private school? Uh, are you out of Ontario? Where are you coming from? That would be great. And I will formally introduce Victoria Hunter, who is one of our Associate Directors of Education and has been with Ruth Rumax Learning Space for a very long time. Welcome to you, Victoria. Thank you. I'm excited to be here tonight. It's going to be such a good discussion because, you know, the assistive technology is something that we we know can be helpful, but we don't always know what to choose or what to teach our kids to use. So that's my aim tonight is just spreading some information. And perhaps when you, you know, leave tonight, you're going to have a few different tools in your toolkit and you can give them a try. All right, let's see who, who is joining us today. Uh, I don't know if it's Lisa or Liza, but um, she's got kids who are nine and 10. They're in private schools in Toronto. Terrific. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Dana has uh, is coming from Toronto. A son recently transitioned from private school to Toronto District School Board in grade nine. That's a big transition to go from probably a much more controlled atmosphere to a larger board. Sometimes you actually have more resources in a larger board as opposed to a smaller private school. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have less, you, you may have more resources, but you don't have the same personal connection that you might have at the private school. So I'm sure there's a, a little bit of a learning curve for you as the parent there too, Dana. All right. Um, so if you, you're just joining us, I would love it if you could put in the chat the ages of your kids so that we get a good idea of who's out there and we can sort of target our discussions to that as well and uh, and what board they are in, whether they're in private school or public school. All right, we'll wait for a couple more people to slide something into the chat. So what we're going to do this evening, we're going to start our presentation in just a moment. And uh, generally, we will leave some areas for uh, some time for questions. There were some um, attendees who sent in their questions ahead of time, which is terrific. So most of those questions will be addressed during the webinar, but we will have a portion of time at the end of different sections to have some question periods. And then of course, we will be around at the end of the, the presentation for any further questions that you have. All right, let's, oh, we've got Kathy's got TDSB and a, a child in grade nine, excellent. Uh, why don't we? share your screen, Victoria, and we're going to get started. And for those people who join us, we'll have to catch them up a little bit later. It's really, you know, I, I just absolutely love doing these webinars because it gives me a chance to, as I said before, share a little bit of what I know and what, what we do all the time. Uh, but it also gives me a chance to interact with, with some of our clients sometimes, some of our families that are part of the Ruth Rumax Learning Space community. And, and it gives me an opportunity to meet and to interact with people that I've never met before, which is always exciting for me. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, perfect. Victoria's, that's me. Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is Ruth Rumack, for those of you who are just joining, and I am the founder and the executive director of education at Ruth Rumack's Learning Space. We are an academic support center. We work with students both um, in a one-to-one -one situation as well as small group situations. We are, I was about to say we're entirely virtual right now, but that's not true because we are starting very slowly to go back in a very safe and controlled way to start inviting students back into the office. Um, but so much of what we do right now is virtual. And what we, we did is really 
pivot, that's the, the key word, we pivoted uh, and we were able to take all of the one-to-one -one instruction, the personalized lessons that we provide for our students. We have a very multimodal, multi-sensory pedagogy where we like to keep our kids active and really play on their strengths while we are um, supporting those areas of challenge. And we have a really loving, fun environment. I think the best part about um, having kids back in the office is that I will get to hear their laughter and hear their uh, their excitement and just sort of feel that buzz. It's a little bit different than, you know, kind of hearing it secondhand as we do the lessons one-to-one -one virtually. All right, let's move on. So we are talking today about assistive technology and we I have to start by talking about universal design and technology. And this idea of universal design is that if it's you know, good for one person in a group, it's probably good for everybody in the group and we should make everything accessible so that everybody gets the thing that they need to be successful. Um, and this picture always, you know, I, I identify with the littlest one on the box because I, some people may say I'm, how would you say, um, vertically challenged i'm five feet nothing and so for me if you give me a step stool that's the same as everybody else but somebody who's six feet is able to see over the um the the fence and i still can't it's not really helping me out the best thing is to take away all of the barriers so that we can all enjoy and learn and communicate in whatever way we need to um one of the things a quote that i was looking up today let me just see what I can, where my, where my good quote is. Hang on one second. It's, I'm actually using paper, like old school. Um, fair isn't everybody getting the same thing. Fair is everybody getting what they need in order to be successful. And I fully, fully believe that. And that's why we're going to look at so many different exec, um, technologies right now. All right, let's take a look. What's our next slide? We're going to talk about what is assistive technology. And assistive technology in the education realm, so as part of the school board's mandate, is considered any technology that benefits somebody with a diagnosed learning challenge. Now, I say that because when you are asking for certain technologies, a school may require that you show proof that your child needs that particular technology to be successful. It also, assistive technology is really there to support student work, um, to support those challenging areas and help them better communicate and learn. And I think at the core of assistive technology, that's what it is. It's there to help people communicate, both communicate um, by producing communication, but also by taking in communication and allowing them to learn and, and to be the best that they can be at their level. The interesting thing is that, you know, for many, many years, um, technology in, this, in the classroom was really hard to get. You, know, you needed a computer to do your work. If you needed voice to text or text to speech, it was really challenging to get the, all the pieces to work together. Um, sometimes kids would be on a waiting list for a laptop for up to two years. And, and maybe in some situations, that's still the same. Although right now, because technology is everywhere and because of the pandemic and the fact that we really had to switch to using these alternatives, um, it's now become more pervasive. And in fact, for our students, that's a plus because it means that it's more mainstream, it's more readily available, and there's a lot out there that we can access. One of the things I want to mention um, for parents who may not be aware that the TDSB has a license with Read and Write. And Read and Write is a technology we're going to talk about later on in the presentation. But anybody, any student who has a TDSB email address, so your first name at TDSB, whatever, is able to um, access all of the, the suite of tools that are available through Read and Write. And all you need to do is contact your classroom teacher or your resource teacher, and there's a website that you go to and, and you can um, get all of that for free right now, which I think is tremendous. We're gonna talk more about it later, but I just wanted to mention it before I forget. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. There's a lot of evidence that tells us that 
early intervention with these technologies is best. And that kind of makes sense because it's like learning any skill. The earlier you start, the more natural it becomes and it just becomes part of what you do on a regular basis. And we know that if you are using certain technologies on a regular basis, your skill will actually improve in an area that could otherwise be challenging for you. So um, the other thing I wanted to say is that assistive technology is different than a computer game. And there are many games and gamified learning um, platforms out there, but a game isn't necessarily there to help a student communicate better. The assistive technology is there to help you communicate in the best way possible. So we will talk about sort of the difference between the games and the, the technologies as we go through the presentation. All right, let's look at the next slide. So how does assistive technology actually help somebody? Well, there are many ways that it does. And we see that firsthand at Ruth Rumax Learning Space when we are looking at, oh, I am, I'm, my screen has jumped to something else, but I'll get back there. Um, there are many ways that, that we can work with a student and give them the training that they need in order to help them gain skill. So when we allow students to use assistive technology, it will allow them to show their potential. It will allow them to um, gain confidence and it will allow them to be independent. And those are three things that are just super duper important in the success of a student academically, but also in life. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about some specific types of assistive technology that can be helpful to students. So the first one we're gonna discuss is text-to-speech uh, technology, which maybe is one that's more familiar to people. Um, so really it's beneficial for students who have language-based learning differences. Um, and sometimes too, you'll find that it might be called read back or read aloud. So you might've heard it referred to by those names as well. Um, one way that it's very helpful is that we find, you know, if a student is, um, you know, having the device, the computer or the phone read aloud to them while they're also looking at the text that's being read, um, it's actually going to improve their fluency and comprehension. So it's also, it's, it's helping them in the moment, but it's also helping build their skills. Okay, so we'll look at some specific um, types of this software. So there are some that you are able to sort of download onto your computer. So the main one that we use is uh, Read and Write, which can be downloaded onto Mac or PC. Um, WordQ is another one that's uh, quite popular and also can be used on Mac or PC. Um, but then there's also uh, programs like Adobe that has a built-in sort of read aloud function as well. So there's a lot of programs now that are starting to add this accessibility tool, which is fantastic. Um, a program that's been around longer is Kurzweil 3000. Um, it's kind of been a little bit overtaken by read and write. So, you know, most of most public and private schools are using read and write, and that's what we use as well. Um, but Kurzweil is still a very good program. Um, so some people might prefer that. Uh, then there's a lot of tools that are actually just built in, as I was saying, to technology people already have. So um, for example, you know, Apple, um, Apple and PC, they tend to have um, text to speech already built into the computer. Uh, iPads will have the speak screen or uh, speak the selected text. Um, and same with Android. So it's great that you can already access these free tools that are on the devices you already own. And then the final category of text to speech programs are more web based. So this is where we get read and write for Google Chrome, uh, which is something that we know and love and we use with many of our students. So it's just a little extension that you can add. You can actually see it up at the top of my browser right there. Um, so I would just click on the screen and the toolbar would open up. Um, and then WordQ um, is a program that, as I said before, you can use on Mac and PC, but it also has a version for Chromebooks as well. So lots of different options at different uh, price points, basically. Okay, so we'll actually give you a little demo of the reading tools in Read and Write. Um, there's kind of different reading tools you can read and read and write. Um, there's the sort of like 
play pause stop button where you can just select a certain amount of text and it will read it out loud to you when you press play. There's the hover speech where I can hover over a certain portion of text and it will read what I'm what my mouse is hovering over. And then the third option is the screenshot reader, where if I have something that's more of an image um, and the other reading features won't pick up on it, uh, the screen reader will. So it will be able to convert the text on that image to something that's readable. Uh, so I will uh, play you a little demo so you guys can see what that looks like. Once you have downloaded the Read and Write extension, it follows you through um, any website that you go to within your Chrome browser. To activate it, you simply click on the extension and the toolbar will drop down. Read and Write offers three different ways to access the text-to-speech tools. You can choose to use the hover speech tool, highlight and press play, or the screenshot reader. Uh, today, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the easiest of the three, um, which is highlight and press play. Our certified and highly trained learning specialists use direct instruction pedagogy, orton gillingham principles, and multisensory activities to help students achieve and surpass their grade level reading skills. The you can press pause at any time or stop to stop the, the readback entirely. If you dislike the voice or the speed, you can change that as well. All you need to do is click options, change the voice. I really like UK English Serena. Um, and you can change the speed with which she reads. I don't typically recommend going below 40 or above 60. However, all students are different. This highly effective approach involves teaching literacy skills using a strategic and systematic method until students master the concepts, moving up and beyond grade level expectations. Direct instruction is delivered using cutting edge and dynamic methods that are tailored to individual learning styles and ensure students' engagement. If All right. Yeah, so you can see there how easy it was to use the tools uh, to read text on a web page. Um, and you can also use these tools in things like a Google Doc um, or uh, also in PDFs. Um, so as we were saying, this, this toolbar can be um, added um, to Google Chrome. There's also the desktop version that you can download. Um, and as we were saying earlier, many schools actually are able to provide this to students for free. Um, so, you know, the student can just uh, speak to their school and they should be able to add it onto the computer using um, their TDSB email. All right, so let's look at some other options as well. Once you have downloaded the Read and Write extension. Okay, so uh, there are also audiobooks, which most people are probably a little bit more familiar with. Um, and luckily, there's many ways people can access audiobooks these days. So going right to your public library is a great way to do that uh, for free. So a lot of public libraries, um, including like Toronto, Vaughan, Mississauga, and many others, uh, have an app called Libby. That's a free app that is accessible um, and allows you to sort of download eBooks or audiobooks. So that's one great resource. Uh, then there's also um, the Center for Equitable Library Access. Um, which is a program basically to provide um, accessible uh, books and other materials to Canadians with print-based disabilities. So this would mean either like a visual disability, a physical disability that would um, inhibit reading or a learning disability. Um, so individuals can register for this program actually right through the website using their public library card. Um, and educators are also able to register for this uh, for free as well so that they can support their students. Another uh, resource to know about is Alternative Education Resources for Ontario. Um, so this is a, a government program and its mandate is to basically provide alternative format texts to students with perceptual disabilities. Um, and these are for students who attend publicly funded uh, educational institutions. Um, so for this, it has to be accessed through the school's resource teacher. So, um, you know, if, 
if you felt like you know a student needed digital copies of textbooks, for example, uh, you could speak to the school resource teacher and they should be able to access this program and get those digital uh, textbooks for the student. And then there's many other websites that also provide audiobooks. Um, so like Audible, many people may know. Um, and then there's some that are geared a little bit more towards younger students like Story Nori. Um, and then there's also some other favorites lit to go inscribed. Uh, lit to go seems to have a lot of like classic texts uh, that you can get copies of um, for audiobooks. And uh, same with Scribe, they have a, a lot of different options out there. So it's worth checking them out. Okay. And Ruth, this one's over to you. Oh, there we go. I unmuted finally. Um, <laughs> so before we go on, though, I did want to take a quick question break. If there are any particular questions, I know Kathy's got a couple of questions for us. Um, she asks, is there a difference between a, a CEA or a C claim and a Chromebook and the regular Chromebooks that are given to all grade nine TDSV students? So from my from my perspective, my understanding is that there is a difference in that your C claim will come loaded with all sorts of tools like these programs, like Read and Write Gold, perhaps um, some other programs we're gonna talk about later. And you can request or your psychologist can request particular programs to be loaded on the computer. The other thing um, that we'll talk about as we go on is there is a difference between some programs that are just loaded on, that are available only through internet um, or they're only available when you're in Wi-Fi um, or connected to the internet and then those that are actually loaded right into the computer which you can use at any time and they're not Wi-Fi or internet dependent. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're getting in the C claim is Portable, wherever that computer goes, you can use those programs um, versus the extensions and things that you can only use in certain situations. So that's one question. Um, and there is another question we've got, what is the best program for typing on scanned worksheets? I don't think we've talked about that yet. Victoria, do you have any suggestions for that? Uh, so if you're trying to type on top of like a PDF, um, some of the note taking programs that we're going to talk about a little bit later would be great for that. So like Notability or OneNote, um, but you can also use uh, PDF annotation with Read and Write. So those would be three good options for that. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and then the other thing, what is the best program for typing high school math programs? We're also going to talk about a few different programs that you can use as well. So we'll get back to that, Kathy, I promise. Um, Liza or Lisa, I'm sorry, I don't know which one it is. Is there something that can scan papers given to students so they can do, um, so they can read to me? Yes. So I would say that um, there are, there are many ways you can do it. There are actually apps on your phone or on your iPad if you have one that you can use. Victoria, do you have something specific you're thinking about? Uh, yeah, I, I use an app called Scanner Pro. Um, it, it does have a small fee for it, uh, but it wasn't much. I can't remember exactly how much. There are free ones as well, but what you wanna look for is ones that uh, have OCR capabilities. So they can convert the text into a readable format for the text to speech reader. Yeah, so if you just need it as a scanner so that you can upload it to your computer and then you can work on it, that's one thing. But if you want this, the reading capabilities so that you can highlight the words and get somebody or get the computer to read it back to you, I think of computers sometimes like people, um, there, that little voice inside my head talking to me, um, then you, you wanna go with something that has that, that particular capability. Okay. Terrific, great questions, thank you. Keep them coming and then we will take breaks in between to, to talk about them. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is dictation technology. And dictation technology, again, because we are using it all the time and it has really become something that's very universal. You can find it on your iPhone or your phone, you can find it on tablets, you can find, find it just about anywhere. Um, this idea of voice to text dictation, so you say something, the computer listens and then types it out for you, is quite prevalent and it's very easily accessible. What I find the most helpful and, you know, going back several years, even 10 years ago, when this technology was not available in our phones, 
It was a game changer for students who had any type of dysgraphia, so any problems with holding the pencil, writing with, with a uh, writing utensil, as well as dyslexia or reading challenges, um, among other learning disabilities, including, although it's not considered a learning disability, but it's still an exceptionality is the idea, you know, focus and attention, just being able to be present and get your ideas out onto the paper quickly. So when we started using dictation tools, it, it was like a whole world opened up for some of our students. And if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna show you an example of what this means. So if, if anybody is a doubter, doesn't believe that assistive technology tools are helpful, which probably there aren't that many doubters in this audience, but who knows, maybe. Um, here is a perfect example. So this was a grade five student. I asked him to write five to seven sentences. Uh, I gave him a range of different writing prompts to start, and this is the one he chose. He chose, if children ruled the world, how would it change? Now I have to tell you that this young man, grade five, was extremely uh, bright, very verbal. He was on the um, the autism spectrum. At that point, it was known as Asperger's. And he, you know, had a lot of very strong opinions about a lot of things. But his ability to get his ideas out onto paper was really hampered by his dysgraphia, his ability to write the letters, as well as a reading disability. And you can see when I asked the question, um, if children ruled the world, how would it change? Given a paper and pencil, this is what he wrote. And in order for me to tell you exactly what it is, I'm going to go back to my notes. He said, world end, Satan, economies collapsing, war, more war, money, worth nothing. He had very, as I said, very, very specific opinions about things, and he was very passionate about it. But this is all that he could get out. So if his grade five teacher was um, assessing him purely on what he could get out on the paper, this would not be, you know, if we talk about a level one, two, three, four, this at a grade five level would really be a level one. And without some type of intervention and some type of, of support, his true ideas and the power of his ideas wouldn't be shown. So I did an experiment. I said, okay, next I'm going to let you type it. So I can see that it's difficult to handwrite and get your ideas out on paper. But what would happen if I give you a keyboard and I let you type it for yourself? And this is what came out. If children ruled the world, then a dictatorship would happen immediately. People tricked into handing over their inheritance. Kids would be killing kids, drug addicts. The apocalypse would happen. Don't let kids rule the world. He was very clear about that. So here we see his ideas are clear. He knows what he wants to say. His spelling is, is there's a challenge with the spelling. It's difficult to understand what he's trying to say if you didn't know where he was going with it. Um, but he still has really strong ideas. So then I said, okay, we're going full, we're going to the end here, and I'm going to allow you to dictate it. He had never seen dictation before. And this was the first time that he could say his words into the microphone of the computer, and his words just came out. And this is what he came up with. If children ruled the world, a dictatorship would happen immediately, and if not immediately, very soon. Most kids would be tricked into handing over their inheritance to older kids. Kids would most likely resort to killing each other and maybe even cannibalism. As I said, very strong emotions here. Some kids would most likely find drugs and then start to abuse them. The apocalypse could happen. My version of the apocalypse is a de desert wasteland with not enough food or water. So don't let kids rule the world. And the reason that I love this example, not just because he was so passionate about what he believed, but also because it showed me so clearly at that point how assistive technology, how just opening up this um, almost like a floodgate allowed his ideas to come out. And he was then able to express himself fully, independently and with confidence. OK, moving on. Okay, so just as with the text to speech, there's a lot of different options uh, for dictation. There is again software that you can sort of download onto your computer. So one of the most well known of these is Dragon Naturally Speaking. It's been around a long time. Um, it's quite a robust program. They even have versions for professionals, business people, lawyers, um, with you know very advanced vocabulary capabilities. Um, but you do have to do a lot of training on a program like that. Um, so there are some simpler things. Um, so for example, there are the already built-in dictation capabilities that are in both uh, Mac and Microsoft uh, software. 
Um, so those, you can kind of just go to your settings and there's, you know, quick ways to turn those on and off. Um, and you could use it with say like a, a writing program to dictate your ideas. Um, and then there's the web-based uh, options as well. So uh, Google voice typing, which is already built into Google Docs. Um, Read and write, which we showed before has a, a text to speech, um, or sorry, speech to text capability. Um, and then there's also the program uh, Speak Q, um, which can also be used uh, on your desktop or on a Chromebook as well. Okay, so we're going to show you an example of how the Google voice typing works. And I think you'll see it's like very simple and easy to use, which is why we love to use it with many of our students. Another great option for dictation without needing to purchase software is Google's voice typing. It's less sophisticated than Dragon and needs the internet to work, but it's completely free and provides an excellent resource for students. To use voice typing, you simply need to be in a Google Doc. If you have the Read and Write Chrome extension, you can access voice typing by clicking on the Speech Input button, found here. If you don't have Read and Write, you can find voice typing in the Tools menu, under Voice Typing. With either option, as soon as you click, you will see a big microphone button appear on the left side of your page. The great thing about voice typing is that there's no setup at all. You can begin dictating right away. Voice typing is a great tool because it lets me use my voice to type, period. There are many commands that Google suggests voice typing can perform, but we've had varying success using these. The more accurate and most used commands are things like comma, period, and new line. Give it a try and see how it works for you. Okay, so you can see it's pretty easy to use, um, and this is why we use it with so many of our students. And as, as the, uh, the speaker there mentioned, um, there are different commands that you can learn how to use. So for example, dictating your punctuation or dictating things like a new line, bold, um, capitalize, things like that. So that's the type of thing we might train a student um, how to do so that they're you know, using it um, to their best advantage. Okay. And can I jump in there for a second? Because I really like the voice typing. I use it myself all the time. I use the Google one or I use notes on my phone. Anytime I have an idea and I don't have anything to write it down, I just say it into my phone. Um, or if I just want to get my ideas out quickly, like a brainstorm and I'm doing some kind of a bullet, I will usually talk it out first and then go back and rework whatever ideas I've got down there. And that's something I encourage our students to do as well, because sometimes it just takes the pressure off having to keep all the ideas in your head, especially kids who are full of ideas. This allows them to kind of quick fire, get them out, and then they can go back and refine them. So as with all of, of the assistive technology, you may, you know, as we go through the evening, we're going to show you that it's a, it's a process of layering. And it's not just using one thing for one particular aspect. You know, one tool is only good for this one thing. It's really about figuring out how to layer them one on top of the other and make it almost seamless. Like first, I'm going to start by um, using voice dictation to get my ideas out. Then I'm going to use the readback function to read my ideas so that I hear them or I can edit them as I hear them. And then I'm going to use a note taking function in order to categorize them and organize them. So you'll see how it's a, a building of skills as opposed to learning skills individually. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Absolutely. And yeah, I would throw into yeah, some of the ways I've used dictation the most with students is yes, brainstorming ideas. Um, and then also occasionally for spelling. So being able to turn it on when you just don't know quite how to spell that one or two words and then turning it off again. So it's, it's a very uh, useful tool in a lot of different ways. Um, so speaking of spelling, um, another tool that can be helpful uh, for students is word prediction. Um, and this is particularly great for younger students who may not uh, be typing so much yet or may not be as proficient with uh, the dictation technology. Um, so this is basically a tool where uh, it's going to provide a list of likely word choices as the child is typing. So very similar to the autocomplete on your phone. It's going to think about, uh, you know, what the most likely words are that the child might want to say next. Okay, now there's kind of different options for um, the ways that word prediction works. 
So some of them will basically suggest a word based on the first few letters. Um, so a program like Read and Write uh, more so does that. Um, and then there are other programs that base it more on the context or the subject, um, what the student's writing about, or they might uh, base it on uh, the phonetic spelling of the word. Um, so it sort of depends what you're looking for in the program. There's some of the, uh, the programs that are sort of most well known up here. So WordQ is a very good one. Um, it's more so one you would be using on a desktop. Um, read and write, as we've shown before, is you know, going to be used in Google Docs. Um, and then there's a number of other ones that are really great as well. There are some uh, built-in keyboards you can use on, if you have a tablet. Um, so lots of different great options that you know, can help students with their spelling um, and really just help them compose in a much easier way without being sort of held back by not knowing how to spell a word. I'm, I want to jump in on that one because so many students that, that I've worked with over the years really censor themselves because they don't know how to spell it. And, you know, so many times brilliant ideas are being just shut down at the gate because a child says, well, I really want to write the word, um, I don't know, um, oh goodness, now I can't think of a fancy word, but a really you know, a dollar, a ten dollar word, we would say, or a two dollar word, but they don't know how to spell it, and so they'll just shut it down right away, and then use a word, sim a sim much simpler word that doesn't really express what they want to say. And if you are repeating that over and over and over again in one paragraph, and let's say fifteen of those words in the paragraph could have been more descriptive, more interesting, you know, more specific, and you have censored it to a point where you're just going for the basics that's definitely going to affect your, your academic outcome as well. Not just you know, the fact that you're censoring yourself and not allowing yourself to communicate in the best way possible. Okay, hey, so one of the uh, options for word prediction is WordQ, which we mentioned before. Um, it's actually currently used by the TESB and you can either uh, download it onto your desktop, onto an iPad or onto a Chromebook. Um, so we'll play you a, a little video here so you can see sort of what it's all about. Everyone has moments where they can't quite find the right word for the situation. And that's where WordQ can help. WordQ is a simple and efficient program that combines word prediction and text-to-speech functionality that can help you easily find the word you're looking for. WordQ adapts to learn which words you like to use and even allows you to modify which vocabularies or topics you wish to use. Furthermore, WordQ isn't limited to just English. It can also use French, Spanish, and German to help you finish your essays, emails, or anything else you're working on. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so one of the things that kind of highlighted in the video there too is that you can continue to kind of add words to the vocabulary of the program. So you can kind of continue to build it up, um, which is really great. Um, it also provides synonyms, which can be another helpful um, thing for students. So it has a lot of really great features. Um, and then we'll show you another option, which is read and write word prediction. So you can kind of see it uh, there. So as the student is writing, if they just click on the little uh, crystal ball <laughs> symbol, I love that one, um, it's going to pop up this little um, window at the bottom and they can just click right on whichever option they would like to add next uh, from the list. You can also control how many words are presented at one time. So, you know, if 10 is too many, we could limit it to maybe only five suggestions. Um, so you can add more or fewer, uh, depending on the student's needs. The other great thing about uh, read and write's word prediction is you can use it in combination with the dictionaries, um, and you can also have it read aloud to you. So kind of combining a bunch of great tools in one. Okay. So sometimes we find a lot of students uh, actually need a lot of help before they get to the drafting stage of writing. They need help with those pre-writing stages, the planning, the organization. Um, and so we have a few different tools we really enjoy uh, using for that. Um, and those would be Inspiration and Mindomo. Um, so the nice thing about these is that 
you know, a lot of students are very resistant to organizing their ideas before they jump in and start writing. We, we find this all the time. But really what we're doing by organizing ideas ahead of time is we're kind of front loading the work. So we can kind of explain to them that we're going to spend some time at the beginning thinking everything through, putting, slotting everything into place. Um, and we can use these, you know, colorful, interesting mind mapping tools to do that. And then when you go to write, it's actually going to be super quick because you already know exactly what you're going to say. And we're just kind of connecting the dots. We know where we're going with it already. So this is a, a view of inspiration. Um, it's a really great tool. It's uh, often used on the iPad, um, but you can also use it on a desktop. You can see it's very colorful. It's got images, uh, you know, different things. You can kind of build a, a very customized mind map. It's also a very intuitive program and easy to use. Um, and then one of the features that we really love is you can take your beautiful mind map and you can actually turn it into an outline view. So you can kind of see that linear progression of what you're going to write. And then you can play around with the order of things. So we might first be kind of just generating ideas. And then after that, we're going to talk about, okay, well now let's prioritize those ideas and put them into the best possible order. Another one that we've been using uh, that's been really great actually for our online lessons is Mindomo. Um, so it has the capability as well to do the mind map or the outline view. Um, and the nice thing that we love about it is that it's also collaborative. So you can be in there with a friend if you're doing a project together, um, or you know we can share it with our students, you could share it with your child. Um, but it's a great way to not only plan out writing, but also do things like, um, you know, annotating an article and making sort of a mind map of what's going on in the article. Uh, you could use it for note taking, project planning, research, all sorts of things. Um, so these are really great tools to help students sort of organize their thoughts. And Victoria, which one of those, or is it both, that you can use voice typing for as well? Uh, you can definitely use voice typing in Mindomo. Um, I'm not sure about inspiration, but they might be possible in both of I, them. I do think that if you're using like something like a tablet, you can use uh, the voice typing feature on the tablet in inspiration because I've done that before. Perfect. Yeah. So I find a lot of these programs now, they, they really want to add as many features as possible to make them very accessible. So as you said, everything's being layered, right? So we can kind of use all these tools together. Um, yeah. So then particularly when we're thinking about those older students, uh, the research and note taking tools really come in handy. Um, so there's a lot of technology uh, tools now that are, are great for helping students create organized notes, um, do research. And a lot of these tools are kind of, they're really all in one. So it's a, a space to kind of uh, save your notes, organize your notes and file them correctly. You can make notes that are sort of multimedia with images, hyperlinks, voice notes, uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, and then you can also use these programs for annotating, um, as someone was asking before about if I were to, were to upload like an article, a PDF of some sort, I could be annotating and making notes on top of it as well. So really great tools. Um, and we'll show you a couple of these. So the first tool we'll show you is uh, again from Read and Write. Um, and this is the highlighting tool. So uh, I'll play the video so you can see what it does. The highlighters in Read and Write are a fabulous way for students to stay organized while completing research. Um, we often suggest that students choose a color for each idea that they may have or are trying to prove. Um, as they go through the article, they can highlight based on those colors. Um, and I'll show you how it's done. So first, we select the text that we want to highlight and then choose a color. It's very simple. You can imagine that these are all different ideas. And lastly, I'm gonna do this one green again so you can see what happens when I collect them. So the collect highlighting tool is right here and you simply click on it and you can choose to sort the highlights by color or position. I'm gonna do color today. You can also choose which colors to collect. So if you wanted these in different documents, you could do so. Once you hit okay, 
a Google Doc is going to be created for you with your highlights collected, the URL for the website so that you, you can always access it in order to create your bibliography, um, and the account with which it's placed this document. So it goes within the Google Drive of this account. As you'll notice, my two green highlights have been lumped together. So if those were both about one idea, I'd be able to easily access that information. Great, yeah. So this is a really great tool for not only doing research, but also for things like reading comprehension, right? So I could be having the student go through an article and highlighting like the main ideas and supporting details in different colors, and then extracting those highlights if they were going to write a summary or something afterwards. Um, Another thing that it that is in read and write that isn't mentioned here also is there is a vocabulary uh, tool as well, so the student can actually build a customized vocabulary list um, as they're going through an article. So this is a really great tool if you're going to have your your child re reading anything on the web, um, it can work on any web page with text. Um, another tool that we really like the highlighter is Notability. So Notability is a fantastic tool. I use it myself. Um, and as I said, it's kind of one of these like all in one note taking systems. So it contains uh, folders where you can actually kind of file things for your different classes. You can open up a blank document and just start some notes. It helps students create really organized uh, multimedia notes. Um, a new feature they've actually added in the newest version is also the ability to record. So if I was say in a lecture, if I was maybe a post-secondary student um, or a high school student, I could turn on uh, the little recording feature. It would record my professor or my teacher as they were talking, and it would actually be able to play back to me what I was typing at certain points during that recording. So very, very useful. Um, great to look back and study from later or to just make sure you caught everything. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of really, really great tools in Notability. I highly recommend it. Um, the only thing about Notability is it's only a Mac program. So if you're more of a PC user, then uh, OneNote would be the way you would want to go. It has pretty much all of the same features. Um, it's just part of that Microsoft uh, Word suite. So it's going to work well with, uh, with all of those programs. Um, another really great uh, note taking um, tool that we love is the Live Scribe pen. I don't know if any of you have heard of these before, but they have these wonderful pens now that um, are smart pens. And basically, if you're someone who really loves writing by hand, um, then you can use one of these pens to sort of write notes by hand, and it will then actually transport what you've written uh, onto your tablet or onto your computer and it can convert them into typed text for you. The other great thing it can do is it has a recording feature in the pen. So you could also be recording the lecture um, as you're taking the notes. And similar to what Notability does, you can play it back and you will see what you were writing at the time uh, that the recording was taking place. So some really, really amazing tools there. I love I love all of the combination of these and the live scribe pen again is one of those game changers for students who have fine motor issues or who have a difficulty concentrating in a lecture or class um, or just have a difficulty listening and writing at the same time because there are lots of lots of us who who can't do both at the same time and one of the things that I like about the live scribe is that you don't actually have to write all of the words that you want to write down. You could write a symbol or one letter or a number. And if you are using, it uses a microphone at the top of the pen. So as it's recording what people are saying, um, it's making sort of like a, a note that, okay, this symbol came at this point in the text. And then you can go back to that point in the notebook um, or on the transcript and hear exactly what you were talking about. So if the professor at university level or high school says, oh, there's a test on Monday, um, and you write the letter T and circle it, that's your symbol for test, then all of the notes and the details and the hints that the professor was talking about will be accessible at that point in the recording. So it's a way of, of calibrating where, where the information is, which can be quite invaluable. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and these pens are actually becoming more popular. Um, I just came across recently uh, Moleskin, the, the brand of journals, has now come out with a smart pen that works with their journals and it will convert things into digital format. So this is becoming the way of the future, I think. Um, another quick one I'll mention is Otter, which is uh, more so a, a transcription uh, program. So if you were you know, in, in a lecture, again, it would sort of transcribe what you were listening to into text for you as well. Some people use the Otter uh, for meetings, like if they're if they're doing a staff meeting or they're doing a meeting with, with or maybe you're going to your IPRC meeting or you're having a meeting with the teacher. And once you get permission from the people to record, then, you know, at least you have a transcript of, of what you're, what, what's been said. It's the, yeah, it's the digital, it's replacing that person who used to be the note taker in the meeting. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, another great uh, tool for um, high school and older students are the bibliography generators. So, boy, I wish I had these back in the day when I was in university, but there's so many websites now where um, it will create citations for you. So really great for students who maybe, um, you know, have trouble staying organized and keeping track of all their sources. They can sort of be plugging things into these uh, programs as they go. And, you know, you just tell the program what style you're doing MLA or APA or whichever style your teacher has asked for, and it will help you generate um, correctly formatted citations. So another just really great tool that's out there these days. Oh man, do I wish I had had those. <laughs> oh, the hours, the agonizing hours of trying to type it or or usually what I used to do is handwrite it because at least I could use whiteout if I made one little error in my comma versus my colon versus my whatever. Okay, so um, next on our list is executive functioning technology. Now, even though we talk about the difference between an assistive technology tool and AT tool uh, specifically for um, a learning challenge versus another type of universal tool, I want to share some of these because, you know, these are, again, sort of universal things that everybody can use and that every, everybody can benefit from, adults and students alike. Um, and we want to look at technology that will help us be organized. Uh, help with time management, our sustained attention and task initiation. And we know that executive functioning is a really big topic these days. We know that individuals who um, are, are blessed with ADHD also have executive functioning challenges. And these types of situations can really impede academic success and, and, and life success too, if you don't show up at the right time or you can't manage your time enough to get your assignments done and hand things in when they're due. Um, let's move on to, to the next thing. So we have a few different things that I wanted to, to show, to bring to your attention if you don't already know about them. So for, for individuals who find themselves getting um, lost sort of in the rabbit hole of the internet or they are using their time not so wisely, two of these apps, one is called Forest and one is called Stay Focused. They both work a little bit differently, but these are things that you can download. You download the app and then Forest, for example, um, the user sets an amount of time they'll be deterred from accessing distracting websites. So it's sort of like a timer that keeps you focused and doesn't and it doesn't allow you to get on to other websites in that time frame. And if you stay focused for that particular amount of time, um, then you get a tree to plant in your virtual forest. And it's it's a little bit gamified, but it's it gives you the motivation to just stay in that moment without using other websites. The other one, Stay Focused, is more about productivity, where you actually block certain websites. Um, and you tell the computer to only allow you to be on those websites for a certain amount of time. And once you've used up your time, let's say you program it, I'm allowed to be on uh, Facebook for half an hour a day. Once you've exceeded that limit, that's it, you're blocked for the rest of the day. So again, these are not foolproof. They're not things, you know, you can always bypass the system and kids know how to do it for sure. But it is um, part of cognitive behavioral training where you're trying to practice that type of, of focus for a certain amount of time. All right, let's look at the next slide. What else have we got there? Oh, oh this over is to you. Hello. Uh, yes, this is a, a program, a productivity tool that we've been using with many, many of our older students. Um, so it allows you to basically create sort of like task lists 
So you can basically create these lists in any way that you like. They're, it's very customizable. Um, usually what we'll say to students is maybe have a list for each of your classes or a list for each day of the week. And then you sort of set up your tasks. Uh, you can add due dates, you can prioritize, you can color code, um, as many different tools and features. Um, and then it also has capabilities like you can change this into a calendar view. So not only do I have my task list, but then I can flip it to see what my week or my month looks like based on the due dates I've put in. The other great thing about it is that it's also collaborative. So I can add other people to my board so I could be using it um, with a team or with a, a project group that I'm working with, um, but we also like to use it with our students so we can keep an eye on uh, what's going on in their lives. <laughs> All right, timers. So timers and reminders are my best friend because I tend to get distracted. I start off doing one thing and then I get distracted by something else. So, you know, in in the olden days, I would just use the microwave and turn the microwave on for 10, 10 minute timer and then do 10 minutes of dishes and then go off to do the next thing. Uh, but now we have so many other fun and cool things to do. Um, visual timers, especially for individuals who have time have time difficulties, have un, uh, difficulty understanding how time actually works, a visual timer can um, really make the difference between getting something done and being somewhere in, at the appropriate time or not. Um, so online, there are many, many timers and many different stopwatches. There are some really fun visual timers like an exploding um, time bomb that you know the the fuse counts down and when it gets down to zero the whole thing explodes or just crazy things out there that the kids really love because it's visual and it's fun and it's silly um and it's motivating because you know you you can see how time is moving down or you're losing time one of the things that i love is called the time timer it's the picture that you see there basically you set the time uh, it shows in red, and as it counts down, the red part disappears. It's extremely easy to see and easy to follow. And then there's a, a dinger at the end. Um, one of the things uh, that we've also come across is something called the pay attention watch or watch minder. And it's really good for students with ADHD or focus and attention challenges because it vibrates gently when the reminder is set. So if you have to take certain medication at a certain time, it, it'll vibrate and remind you about that. It'll send you messages. You can program it for different things, for different tasks at different times of the day as well. So although these wouldn't be necessarily called um, assistive technology in, in the academic side of things, these are really helpful tools to help keep ourselves and our kids on track and motivated and getting the stuff done that they need to get done. So in terms of these executive functioning helps or hacks, um, I'm going to put another plug in there that in two weeks time on November 18th, we are doing another webinar all about executive functions and a different tips and tricks and strategies that you can use. So if you're interested, make sure that you sign up uh, back on our website. I'll tell you more about that at the end. But just in case I forgot, I thought I'd stick it in now where it's appropriate. What else? Hey, and then we don't want to end without talking about math. Um, yeah, so there are different uh, programs as well to help students with dyslexia or dysgraphia uh, be able to do their math work digitally. So the first one you see here is Mod Math. Um, this is an app that basically allows students to type in their math. It has a lot of pre-programmed formulas uh, that you can pull up um, to use. And it has a nice sort of graph structure there, graph paper structure, so you can keep everything lined up properly. Um, so if, you know, if your child is someone who's having trouble sort of keeping their, you know, numbers lined up and, and things are kind of just getting all over the place and, and then there's calculation errors because of that, this could be a really good program for them. Let me ask a question or, or just say that this mod math is not a calculating, it doesn't do the calculation for you. Mm -hmm. It just puts the pieces in place, which is actually better in the school setting because what you're doing is you are taking away the visual spatial aspect of doing the math and just getting the student to focus on the actual computation. So it's not doing the work for them. It's just lining it up for them. Yeah. And also, if you know, if there's a fine motor challenge and the numbers maybe are 
looking, you know, maybe getting confused or things like that, you know, it's, it's typed out for you. So it's clear to see which number you meant to have there. Uh, the other program that's available is Equatio. Um, so this is actually done by the same company that does read and write. So it has many of the same features. Um, it has many, many ways to get your math onto the page. So students can type their math, they can dictate math, um, they can use, you know, formulas and things that are already um, contained in the program. Um, and it will sort of, uh, there's like shortcuts you can learn as well. So um, if you're doing certain formulas over and over, there's shortcuts and, and ways you can kind of access it more easily. So Equatio is a really great tool. It also has, you know, things for geometry, like shapes and um, protractors, virtual protractors, and all sorts of tools to do different uh, strands of math. So a really great way for students to maybe do their math homework digitally, um, and then they could submit it right to their teacher through Google Classroom. Okay. That's back to me. So um, just as we come to the end of things, I'm gonna leave a little bit of time for, uh, for questions. I hope that you stick around for the questions. Sometimes I find that the conversation that, we, that, that comes out of the questions is just as valuable um, as the whole presentation itself, because you never know what nugget you're gonna get out from there. But before we get to the end, I wanna tell you a little bit about more about what we do and uh, what we can offer your families and your, your students or yourself if you're a student yourself. So we do have assistive technology training plans and we start with an assistive technology um, assessment where we ask a bunch of questions and we try and figure out what it is that your child or you need particularly, what are the challenges, what's working, what's not working. And then we can individually build a program for you, whether it's a three hour package or a six hour package, or if you just want like a one hour session just to get a sort of lay of the land and figure out what, what you might be able to figure out on your own, give us a call and we can set something up. Um, and we will definitely be sending out more information when we send out the handout for this webinar as well. And uh, we welcome all kinds of questions, even if you just wanna have a quick chat with one of our associate directors of education, like the fabulous Victoria, um, very, very knowledgeable. And you know, as, as I think you can tell, we live, we, we live it, we walk, we walk the walk, we talk the talk, we, we make sure that we're using the programs that we're suggesting and uh, we see the benefit of them every single day for sure. Let's look at the next slide. Um, this is just a little bit more about what we do. So we can offer our services in a one-to-one -one situation. Uh, we also do test prep. If any of you are, are have children that are preparing to enter into either private schools or they are looking ahead to universities in the States, um, as well as any other type of entrance exam. And we also have book uh, group classes that cover all sorts of different types of uh, subjects, ranging from written expression through to math. Keyboarding is a really good one. Again, a keyboarding class is not an assistive technology, but it's certainly giving you the um, advantage of proper placement and speed and confidence. So, you know, regardless of what your child's typing strategies are, one finger, two finger, um, having proper instruction in keyboarding is definitely a good thing to have. It just increases efficiency in enormously. Um, all right, let's see. I wanna go to questions right now. And I, uh, I see there's a question. As we, we come to the end, I would love it. I would love some feedback. And we always send out a feedback form at the end. Um, all feedback is taken into consideration, positive and constructive. And I would love to hear from you, our, our watchers, our viewers. What did you take away from today? One thing, what is one new tool or new insight or something that you just didn't know about before or something that you found interesting? Um, I would love it if you could light up the chat board and we can see some of those things. Um, makes us feel good too, like we're not working in a vacuum. It's kind of odd sometimes to be in this bubble, this virtual bubble. So Kathy asks, have you heard of a program called CAMI for PDF annotation? I have not. Victoria, have you? No, I haven't either, but maybe it's a newer one on the market. Um, I mean, there's many, many ones out there. I think it, it just depends what features you're looking for. 
so the other thing I wanted to mention, I just got um, an insider scoop from Read and Write from the, the makers of Read and Write Gold. They have a new, um, what, a new note taking, converting, connecting and creating PDF um, thing called Orbit Note that they are launching at the end of November. So stay tuned because we may have more to say about that next time for sure. Um, Dana says that she was she really appreciates the read and write. Annie says thank you so much for this really informative session. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Liza says I had not heard of the math program, so thank you. Also, as older parents, this is overwhelming. <laughs> so thank you for your consultation ability. Oh, you are so so welcome. Seriously, like pick up the phone or send us an email. Um, we are very happy to get back to you and have a, a you know a consultation just to see where you're at and answer any other questions. We offer a ton of different things for students at different levels, ages, stages, needs, abilities. Um, and really we customize everything that we do. So we take all this good knowledge that we have at our fingertips and we put it to work for your, for your families in the best way possible. Anybody else wanna share what they've, what they've gained? I'll leave that open for a moment. And if you do need to leave us, I'm I'm really pleased. It's only 8.05. We did really well, Victoria. Usually we could talk forever, but we're going to stick around for a few minutes if you want to ask a few more questions or you want to um, message us privately and we can get back to you. But in, um, in any case, thank you so much for joining us. And please join us again on November 18th for our executive functions webinar, where we're going to give you all kinds of tools and tricks and strategies for boosting efficiency and focus and uh, controlling those emotions. All of the executive functions will be discussed and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, Victoria. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Thanks, Have a great night. All right, I am gonna stick around um, and see if anybody has anything else they want to ask a question. I see there's still people hanging around, so go for it. Um, let's see. Someone's asking about booking uh, to talk about the technology. Yes, so you can call the office 416-925-1225, or you can go right through our website, ruthrumac.com, and you will fill out a form, and then we'll um, send you all We'll, we'll connect with you either through email or through just picking up the phone and talking to you. Um, terrific. So I would love to, yeah, love to talk to anybody who wants to know more about the assistive technology programs or just our one-to-one -one programs as well. Anybody have any comments or you're welcome to take yourself. We can take you off mute if you wanted to ask a, another question. This is my favorite part, talking to people. We're, come on, I'm here. Maybe, I know I still see people hanging out on the Zoom, so I know you're there. Anybody who has a question? Oh, there's one, Althea. My son took the executive function program in January, 2021. He is needing more support. What do you suggest? So if he took the, the group program, um, you probably want to have him come in to do some one-to-one. -one. The executive functions are something that you know need to build and you need to practice those skills in a consistent way. If he took it in January, 2021, so that was like almost a year ago, and that was probably in the middle of uh, online learning. Now he's into classroom learning and it's, it's another ball game, right? Like he, he's got to figure out how to organize his stuff day to day as well, uh, you know, not just in the virtual sphere. So um, I would say that if he's got a foundation, he's learned a few things from the group class, now would be the time to do some one-on-one -on -one so that we can teach him some techniques and monitor those techniques. I think that's a really important thing is that to, to learn techniques in a vacuum is only, you know, is, is only so good. It will, it will get you so far depending on how motivated you are and how consistent you are. But if you have somebody you're accountable to and you're checking in with once or twice a week, it really ups the ante and it allows you to practice those um, strategies on a regular basis so that it becomes a habit and then you don't even think about it anymore. Um, Victoria, is there anything you wanna to add to that one? No, I, I think you're right, yeah. I think the, you know, they need the ongoing support 
in order to practice those skills. They're not going to come right away. So, you know, it's great that, you know, students have the tools, but then we want to help them continue to implement um, and make it a habit, basically, so it becomes more automatic. Well, that's it. it. It's about habit forming. And, you know, we can look at cognitive behavioral uh, CBT, cog cognitive behavioral therapy, and that's all about going through the motions of something over and over again, getting your brain to kind of um, get in the habit of recognizing them and reducing anxiety and reducing stress around certain situations and learning executive functions, especially for kids who have um, challenges with executive functions can produce anxiety and or can produce, uh, you know, defensiveness or shutdown or overwhelm or a whole bunch of things. But if we can give our students very specific techniques that we're practicing with them and um, supporting them with on, on a one to one basis, it will take that learning even farther. So Althea, I hear you, you sent us another message. We love the program and we're reviewing what he has learned. That's really fabulous. And that's the best thing. Like just keep going over it. Look at those. Um, sometimes, you know, when you get so much information, like an event like this evening, you get so much information, it's overwhelming. You need to go back and just sort of pick apart. Okay, I'm going to focus on, on read and write for now. I want to know what read and write can offer me or I'm only gonna start with one or two features of read and write, and then we're gonna build from there. So we, we wanna to get to know what the student's challenges are, where are the, where's the disconnect and where is he having the most um, difficulty really, and then pinpoint that on, on its own. Um, Susan says that the time timer is excellent for transitions at home. Susan is one of our teachers and has put her uh, understanding of executive functions to work in her own home with her, I think, how old is she now? Six? Is she six or seven? I can't, I can't think quickly, but, uh, oh, seven. I was pretty, I was good. Good for me. So looking at how to make your home life more efficient, the time timer is hugely beneficial. I used it with my own daughter um, and it really helped her understand that when it's 8.15 and you have to leave the house at 8.30, that is not the time to suddenly, you know, dump out your, I don't know, t-shirt drawer and start searching for a particular thing that you lost two months ago. Um, just, you know, talking from personal experience. All right. Um, is there anybody else? I know we still have some people hanging around. Anybody else have a question or a comment or they just want to have a chat with us? We're here for you. So take advantage. Dun, 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 dun. Anything else that you want to say, Victoria? Anything that comes to mind? Um, no, I mean, I think we covered so much of it, but I think, you know, assistive tech can just be so beneficial for students um, who've been struggling for a long time. And, um, you know, we find for a lot of them, it's kind of like an aha moment when they, their eyes kind of light up when they see that this tool can make life so much easier for them. Um, yeah, totally. So it's and and it's actually it's a very emotional moment sometimes when a, a student discovers something that will actually that will change their lives and their ability to interact with other people, to interact academically. As I said before at the beginning, to give them confidence, to give them independence, to give them new skills. Those are the moments that really make all of, of the effort that goes into it and goes around it worthwhile. When a student actually picks, oh, I should have told this story. You know, we had a student who had a really um, significant reading challenge, like really significant. And sounding out even the simplest words was really difficult for her. And she was in grade five at the time. And she had, um, she had never read a book on her own. It had always been read to her or the classroom teacher had read it aloud, but she had never had that independence. And we set her up with the, the reading technology that the speech to the text to speech functions. And she was able to, for the first time in her life, read the book at her own pace, in her own time, privately in her bedroom by herself. And she read, I think it was the Percy Jackson series. And it was the first time that she'd ever been able to read something that her peers were also reading. And she was able to go back to school the next day and, uh, and converse and, and say, oh my gosh, I got to that part. And oh yeah, I read that part too. And she was just 
able to be completely part of the social fabric, whereas before she would always hang back and not be able to participate in those conversations because she hadn't um, she hadn't gotten the information. She hadn't it hadn't been communicated to her in a way that was accessible. So when the, when her parents said to me, I have to tell you that I almost had to take away her iPad because it was midnight and she still didn't want to go to sleep because she was so engrossed in the book like that, you know, brought tears to everybody's eyes. So good stories, lots of good stories. All right, everybody, if nobody has any other further questions, um, if there's anything else that you would like to know from us, reach out by email, uh, info at ruthrumac.com, or you can call us 416-925-1225. Uh, there are lots of ways to get to us through the website. We have a, an information portal. Um, and again, thank you for being with us, and we will see you all soon. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.